This is exporting character animation to Unreal. Uh, and the very first thing you need to do is make sure that you go to File, Save Scene As, and then iterate um, the next. Uh, so, so originally this was uh, Armored Hammerig 2020. So I'm going to name this animation out underscore out underscore 01. It's the very first thing you need to do because, or 02, I mean, I already, I already did this once. So I want to make sure you iterate because it's destructive. And if you accidentally save over your old file, um, that's going to be bad. So the very first thing we need to do is turn off uh, anything that we're not going to be exporting. So I want to show none and just come back into show polygons. Then right now he's not smooth. So we want to make sure that <clears throat> normally in the viewport you'll you know you'll have the viewport smooth version if you hit three. But you want to go back down to one. And then in the modelings tab, go to mesh. Um, Sorry. Smooth. And then, you know, whatever, how many ever subdivisions you need. That way it'll be one to one geometry. Um, the other thing to make sure that you want to do, sometimes you can export it, but just to be on the safe side, I always go to triangulate, mesh, triangulate. And that will make sure that the Alembic file is happy. So animation is still working. Uh, you've got smooth, you've got a triangulated, and then now what you need to do is actually bake the animation down. So if you go to the animation key, bake simulation, you want to open up that dialog box. So it's going to be everything that's selected, make sure everything that's going out is selected, all keyable. Um, <clears throat> In this case, we only need 35 frames. And I'm going to make this a new layer. And I'm going to say clear animation. And the reason is, is this gets really slow if you try and merge all of the layers down. Uh, it's a, I think it's a bug in 2019 and 2020. Um, and if your bakes are taking like five minutes, that's going to be the problem. Um, you can sample frame, one frame, uh, keep unbaked keys, sparse curve bake is off, disable implicit control and unroll are checked. The other thing you want to be aware of is your frames per second because you need to set that in Unreal when we get over there. So I'm going to get hit, hit bake and it should be pretty quick um, unless it's really complicated. Again, you'll know it uh, pretty quickly. If, if it's if it's slow. So now what we're going to do is select everything. We should have a key on every single frame. And then we're going to go to cache, Alembic cache, export selection to Alembic, and open up that dialog box. Um, again, uh, 35 frames, one step per frame. Um, you'll see here this cache time is 1 to 35. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to make sure that right UVs, color sets, right face sets, and whole, whole frame geo is on. Everything else can be off. Um, we did find out last term that it exports uh, vertex color. So you can use, uh, if you're using vertex color with MASH, uh, that'll come in fine. Um, and then just set this to HDF5. And then that's export selection. And you're going to go to wherever you're um, exporting things. It doesn't necessarily have to be inside um, of the project file. Uh, unless they're really big, I generally tend to keep the ABC Olympic files in with the project wherever it's going. So we're going to create the ABC file, and then uh, Unreal will import that as a, as a U asset. So I'm going to go 
grab that path and paste it in there if I can get it right. And then I'm going to just iterate this to eight. And this is all your, all your stuff should be set up. That was your dialog. So we'll go through each frame. And what it's essentially doing is telling the each vertice at each frame and giving a, a XYZ coordinate for it. So Then when we come over to Unreal, Get rid of this last guy here. It's going to ask if you want to import it. If you don't, I mean, you can either import it and you'll get this dialog box, or if you do, just want to do it by hand, you can go to your folder, right click, and hit import. Again, you should get this dialog box. This is all your shapes your start frame, your end frame. Uh, this is really important. Most of the time this is going to be set to static mesh when you open it up the first time. You want your import type to be geometry cache. Again, uh, it's going to try to set our frame numbers. Um, all of this is fine with defaults. You want to make sure that uh, recompute normals is on and uh, ignore degregate triangles it's too small for me to read um, the other thing is is if you set this to Maya this is all fine but you just need to type in 90 degrees on X um, you you can leave it off if, if you if you forget that step um, and then you just have to actually go into the you know into the channel box or where right there where uh, your details is what it is in Unreal and set that to 90 and that'll be fine. So then I'm going to pull our guy into the scene and he's going to hit this little yellow back button and that's going to set it to 000. And notice our rotation is fine. He's standing up. If he's not, or whatever your animation is, just turn that to 90 degrees and that'll be okay. So now we need to get him moving. Oops, I just made a duplicate. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, add a level sequence and then drop it into whatever shot. Uh, there'll be a shots directory and then uh, we'll call, let's call this shots underscore zero 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 whatever your shot is underscore. Naming conventions are, are really important um, just because if there's things you need to do in bulk or go find something you have an idea. The other thing is, is um, after the shot, we put our initials so you know who the last person to touch the file was or who may have some knowledge about it. Um, and then we're going to name that underscore SEQ. So you want to put the SEQ at the end so you can find all your sequences if you want to render out multiple shots. So then you'll get the sequencer and uh, you'll have your timeline. Now, if you if you reopen um, Unreal and there's it's blank down here, you can select your sequence here. If you need to look, if you need to search for it, you know, you just type in sequence and you'll see it. Um, and then you can hit open level, and then you'll be able to see your timeline. Otherwise, it'll just be a gray box down here. Then we're gonna have grab our guy, pull him down into the gray area, and then he'll show up in the sequence. And set that to zero. Then go to your track, the little black plus button, track, and there's gonna be geometry cache component. That's not what we want. We wanna to go to the geometry cache that comes with the file. So it's the one that's right under transform. And now we'll have, we should see our 35 frames, and he's gonna wave. But Notice it's going to 44, and that's because it's set to 30 frames per second, whereas in, in Maya, it was set to 24. So now our frame range is correct, and uh, the animation is correct. 